As Nvidia stock continues its journey upwards in the stock market, we're gonna try to figure out what is the actual value of the company and if it's a good idea to invest in company at this price, which represents now a company that is in the same size category as Apple and Microsoft. So essentially this is one of the top three biggest companies on the planet. And should you invest your money in uh, Nvidia right now? You can see just quickly on the you know forecast and the tip ranks how many of the analyst companies are you know having buy rating you can see that 37 of the 40 have buy rating three hold and no one is uh, projecting sell and the street high right now is 150 us dollar as the stock price uh, sits at 123 after the 10 to 1 stock list uh, this week so yeah the stock was split at 10 to 1 so previously the price was obviously around 1200 they split it by 10 and now it's 123 so why do I think this is an interesting question to answer for you as an investor in NVIDIA? Well, you can see that, you know, everything looks great. The NVIDIA data center GPU shipment, uh, according to VCCF Tech, uh, reached almost 4 million in 2023, which represents roughly 98% of market. And also you can see here that TSMC's entire uh, Cobos uh, supplier is reportedly reserved by NVIDIA and essentially most of the rest also by AMD. So TSMC are increasing their Cobos uh, capacity by quite a bit. Uh, they've been increasing it by like 50-60% uh, for a couple of years now, yearly. So now they are at around, I think, uh, 40,000. Uh, yeah, I think if you look at the semi-wiki estimations, I think the numbers are around 40,000 Cobos uh, wafers per month. That would represent, I think that would represent maybe 50-60% to 60 for NVIDIA. 10 to 20 maybe 25 percent amd and then the rest of the companies share it now when i say amd i mean amd in the let's see here on this graph amd is to uh, do the green one but also the yellow one here xilinx so because amd purchased the xilinx which is now their embedded part so those two uh, segments should be roughly one half or one third of nvidia's and it's important to know about the Cobos uh, chip on wafer on substrate, which is a, a method that TSMC uses to connect the uh, package, the different dyes that essentially builds up your uh, chips, which is like, for example, the NVIDIA B200, the Blackwell series, which they launched on the uh, last week in Computex or the previous generation NVIDIA based on the Hopper uh, architecture uh, H100. Um, so yeah, these these are the very advanced and big chips, and they need a lot of complex packaging. So it's a limit limiting factor, and that's where TSMC comes into the picture. But I think as an investor, it's really important to follow, you know, these numbers, like how much of the Cobos capacity are going to Nvidia, and then the competition. But we can see that it looks like that Nvidia has actually think about this, and they have uh, captured a lot of the. Uh, projected uh, Cobos capacity from TSMC for the for 2024 and next year as well. So now let's just quickly go back to the you know the earnings for, uh, forecast for the coming years. So now if you invest in a company, if the company's projected EPS is in this way, you know going from 2.5 to up till uh, up to 4.3 in the coming four years. We should have, you know, the projected uh, forward PE ratio that is look like 46, which is a bit expensive, but nowhere near like a bubble, in my opinion, for this kind of high, high tech company. So the question is then, what is the catch here, you know, or is there actual catch? Well, in order to uh, to figure that out, we have to, let's say, poke hole into this theory of the analyst forecast for their yearly expected earnings per share. You know, it, these numbers are projections. And how true are these projections and what are the risks that these projections are actually too high or maybe too low? But in, I think the risk for you, if it's too high, I mean, uh, all good, you know, you, you make even more money. But the risk here is what is what is uh, what if these uh, projections are too lofty? And in order to look at that, I think it's important to understand what are these actual AI chips? So you can see here that I made this graph for NVIDIA and their main competitor, which honestly right now is not, not at all, AMD and Intel, which just tipped their toes into the water recently. But yeah, so and then so I look at NVIDIA, AMD and Intel. And then I look at the full year 2023 revenue roughly for NVIDIA. Their revenue was, I think, 47, 48 billion US dollar for the AI chips.
um, at an I'm assuming at an average uh, average selling price of thirty thousand US dollar, and if you look at the revenue divided by the average selling price, you will get roughly one and one and a half one point six million H one hundred chips. So H one hundred, remember, is based on Hopper, and it's the one that carried Nvidia last year and the first half of this year as well until you know the Blackwell series the updated the next generation enters the market and uh, they they had I mean this is already insane amount of revenue you have to remember that in 2022 Nvidia's entire revenue was somewhere around 20 to 25 billion for all their segments including data center and in last year they managed to essentially double their entire revenue just in their data center so this is huge profitable business for nvidia now the gross margin is a bit difficult to project but uh, my suspicions are that the gross margin for nvidia in 2023 uh, only for the ai data center market was 70 percent and these are very rough numbers it could be 75 it could be 68 but uh, i just said you know let's let's go with 70 percent just to make a point because when we go into 2024 we can see that um, already in Q1 they had almost 20 billion in AI GPU uh, revenue. You know, uh, when Nvidia reports their numbers for data centers, they report them as data center, and that includes the compute part and the networking part, which I separated here. So you see that in Q1 this year, the revenue for the data center was 22.5 billion US dollar, of which 19.4 roughly was for the GPUs and the rest for the G for the networking, which is the NVLink, so the, essentially the part that NVIDIA's GPUs communicate to each other. But if you just look at the GPUs, you can see that there's around 20 billion, 19.4 billion of revenue, which essentially is 40% of 2023's entire revenue for data center, which already was twice the size of 2022's entire company revenue. And my projections are that NVIDIA is gonna be around let's say 95 billion now it could be more maybe 105 110 billion US dollar or less let's say 80 or 85 but somewhere in the, in that ballpark between 80 to 110 billion so I said let's say 95 billion and that would give you a uh, units uh, so at, at the same average selling price you would get a uh, around 3.2 million h100 uh, or sorry actually in this case it would be h100 h200 and b100 and b200 chips why is that important that number well as you can see here my estimations is that they go from one and a half million to three million roughly now this article mentions four million i don't know how correct this is but i think it's at least in the same rough ballpark and if you look at the cobos capacity you know that if you followed my channel you know that i previously made a rough estimations on how you could go from the you know the reported the uh, covos number supply from tsmc to the number of chips that nvidia will sell so in this way you essentially go ahead of the market and can estimate your own numbers based on a few factors how many chips nvidia will sell so in, in 2023 uh, by by the summer tsmc had capacity of 8000 wafers per per month for covos packaging of which essentially half or 60% went to Nvidia and just let's say 1% went to went to AMD because AMD remember are 9 to 12 months behind Nvidia in this segment by end of 2023 Nvidia made 11 sorry TSMC had a capacity of around 11,000 to 12,000 wafers and these numbers are the old numbers for this year but I think they now has, have revised it up to up to 40,000 wafers. So I should update this to 40,000. And again, you know, that would mean that NVIDIA would have 50, sorry, 50% 50 of that around. So that would be twice this number. But anyways, we also know that um, the, the H100 chip has a die size of 815 square millimeters. And I just assumed a rough number of 34 good dies. How did I get this number? Well, I did, a, you know, use these uh, silicon calculations because once you have your wafer, you, you'll have gonna some defects. And um, so, yeah, so it's not a perfect scenario, you know. You, you're not gonna get all good chips from one single wafer. So you're gonna have some faulty ones and they are not gonna be used. 
So I assume 34 good wafers, uh, good chips per wafer. And we have, you know, it's just easy then. Just take the number of chips per wafer times the number of wafers allocated from TSMC to NVIDIA. So in this case, I just took, you know, 34 times 4,000 or 34 times 9,000 in this case. And then you get the amount of suspected um, number of uh, chips that NVIDIA will produce. And then from there, it's just to take the, the expected selling price and I assumed 30,000 US dollar per NVIDIA chip. And that 30,000 you're gonna see is very important because again, I assumed also for this year that NVIDIA has very, very strong pr pricing power. Uh, but the interesting part here is look at the competition. So in this case, at least right now is AMD. You can see that AMD, as I mentioned, was very slow in the beginning. So for the full year of 2023, and essentially I would say this is maybe late November and entire month of December, they managed to sell roughly 500 million in uh, in uh, in their equivalent of um, H100, which is the MI300 chip. And AMD is selling these at, at much lower price than uh, NVIDIA, although these are still very high prices. I mean, 15,000 US dollar, but yeah, compared to NVIDIA is half the price roughly. And I would get around 30,000 of AMD chips in last uh, quarter of last year, essentially, for AMD. But you can see that AMD's paper allocation, as said also in the reports, you know, they have, let's say, compared to NVIDIA, maybe one third or one half of NVIDIA's wafers. I, I believe it's much closer, actually, to maybe the, the smaller number, so one third of NVIDIA's wafer allocation from TSMC. Um, but it's still a, a large amount of wafers. And yeah, so for Q1 of this year, I think because Nvidia, uh, sorry, and AMD on their earnings call mentioned that they managed to sell around 1 billion of MI300 chips for Q1 this year and Q4 last year. So I assume that, you know, roughly 1 billion would mean 500 million by Q1, uh, Q4 last year and 650 this, uh, this first Q1. And then at 15,000 average selling price, we will get roughly 43,000 MI300s. But the interesting part is that they're going to ramp up the MI300 production very fast. It's the fastest ramping AMD product of all time, they said many times. And they increased their yearly sales estimate for MI300 first from like 1.5 billion, and then they increased it to 3.5 billion, and then they increased it to 4 billion a couple of weeks ago. But I do believe that 4 billion is low, so I, I went with roughly 5.5 billion. So yeah, if you do all this math, and you can see that by end of the year, AMD should sell roughly 5.5 billion in sales, but Nvidia will have 95 billion. So that ratio for 2023 was, you know, 95 times. So AMD, AMD was selling essentially for one AMD chip, Nvidia sold 95 times in revenue. And then in 2024, so this year, I expect that 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 difference is gonna close. Uh, so the delta will uh, decrease. So AMD will have roughly 18 times less revenue compared to Nvidia, which is quite a bit still for AMD, a company the size of AMD. But the interesting part is, if you look at, you know, you have to consider that AMD is selling them at a much lower price, so essentially half the price. This means that if you look at the actual units shipped. AMD's difference compared to Nvidia is now less. So in in revenue terms, AMD is 18 times smaller, maybe somewhere thereabouts. But in actual units shipped terms, AMD is maybe eight to nine times smaller than Nvidia, and that gives you around, you know, let's say 10% market share, 5% revenue wise, but 10% units uh, shipped wise. And I do expect that. That difference will decrease even in 2025 so i think an amd will gain in terms of revenue but also in terms of uh, units sold even more market share compared to nvidia that's not a worry actually for nvidia because you know and it's a market that still keeps growing but the question is that you know i asked you before how much can we trust these numbers so i think 2025 numbers are good but going onwards you know if if um uh, the danger here is like what happens when AMD has 20 or 25% of the market share or Nvidia able to 
defend these prices because if you're Microsoft or if you are another customer for Nvidia, let's say OpenAI or whatever it might be, why should you pay this twice the amount of money for Nvidia when uh, when you can buy essentially same or very very equal product from AMD? And in some cases, AMD is actually better. Look at this, you know, in terms of memory capacity, M MI300 is already basically more than two times the size of um, Nvidia's H100. Sure, Nvidia will close that gap now in Q4 with the, the Blackwell series, which I mentioned previously. But yeah, and also Blackwell is better than AMD's MI300 in other parts. But in some segments, AM AMD is very, very competitive. So why should... Uh, it's not a given that AMD, NVIDIA will be able to defend these uh, prices they have now. And why is that important? Well, look at this. So this is NVIDIA's Q1. Uh, this is last year's Q1. I don't know why they reported full year of 2024, but this is the Q1 of 2023, essentially. So their gross margin is already very good. But look at this, you know, <laughs> their gross margin went from 67, 66.8 to 78.9. And what, how, how much does it affect the company's earnings per share so you can see here uh, remember these all you know last quarter so these are based on based on the pre uh, pre split uh, so, so you have to take everything divided by 10 when it comes to earnings per share so these are like you know after the split this is like divided by 10 so that gives you 0 0.598 so roughly 0 0.6 uh, us dollar of uh, earnings per share but if you forget the split, so look at this, you know, um, this number increased by 629% compared to one year earlier, which means that this additional of 11, 12% of gross margin for Nvidia give them, you know, five times more earnings per share. So now think about what could happen if they get a bit of price pressure from AMD. You know, what happens if uh, AMD manages to attack them quite well and also Intel enters the market? And then, you know, the, the latest rumors that TSMC is also demanding more money from Nvidia. Just think about what could happen with this 78.9%. Nvidia is still a great company at 66% gross margin, way higher, for example, than AMD that is right now around 50%. But just sit down a minute and think what's going to happen if the average sharing price goes down, gross margin goes down to let's say 71% compared to 78.9. And I think that's the danger because you know, from 66.8 to 78.9, they increased their EPS by six times. So all, all that is needed for the story to essentially halt and maybe crash down a bit is that someone is gonna stop to pay Nvidia these kind of prices. And I think it's possible. I think, uh, again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't invest in NVIDIA for the closest 12 months. But I think after that, it's a huge risk. And uh, yeah, you should definitely consider that. So thank you for watching. And uh, please subscribe, like the video if you liked it and dislike it. And tell me why I could do better. And see you in the next one.